Hello, in this tutorial we're going to show you how Cut 3D can be used to carve a decorative wooden bowl such as the one we have here in the three dimensional view. We're going to machine this design two sided so from the top we're going to cut the cavities or the pockets in the bowl and we're going to flip the material over and machine the bottom using a ball nose cutter. We're also going to add tabs around the design to hold it in place during machining. So if we just close the file for a moment, so file close, open the original design, the V3D file which is in the samples folder, but remember the software can also open many other mesh file formats such as STL, 3DDXF, 3D Studio, VRML, Wavefront etc. So if we open the bowl file, we see the CAD design drawn in the three dimensional view and we twiddle and move using the left mouse button. We can specify the size of the design, so here the design is 15 inches long, 8.2 inches wide or high. Also specify whether we wish to do single single sided machining or double sided machining or four sided machining. In this example we're going to do two sided machining, we're going to machine from the top and then machine from the bottom. Click the apply button and next go to step two where we specify the material size. So here we're going to cut the job from a piece of material that's 17 inches long by 10 inches high and we'll cut it out of a piece of material that's three quarters of an inch thick and apply. So the, the black wireframe rectangle represents the bounding limits of our 17 by 10 inch piece of material. At the moment the dark green area represents where the cutter is going to machine onto, so the cut plane. Now we could machine the complete rectangle or we can machine to within a boundary or a constant offset around the design minimizing the amount of cutting time. So if we say use the silhouette or the edge of the, of the design and we want to cut within say 0.4 of an inch all the way around. Hit the apply button. So we've now got material left on around the design. We're also going to overcut the design where the cutter from the top and the bottom meet on the walls. We'll, if we just cut to the zero plane, we'll end up with a radius or a fillet in the, on the plane. If we force the cutters to pass each other by say 0.2 of an inch, this will eliminate the fillet. So apply. We're also going to add some tabs. So add tabs. Just view down the z-axis for a moment. Use the right hand mouse button to push away to, to zoom in. Specify the thickness of the tab and the height or the width and the height. Add a tab and simply click on the model and it will merge from the edge of the material into the design. Add another tab. Add another tab. Add a tab to the handle. Let's add a, a couple of other tabs just to make sure that the part doesn't break fr free or move when we're machining. So if we just twiddle this round, we'll see that the tabs merge into the design. Close the tabs for a moment and click the next button. The third step is rough machining. Here we, we select the cutter that we wish to use to rough machine. Say for example we use a quarter inch end mill. The speeds and feeds, the, the depth per pass are all set up in the tool database. You can also edit this information if you wish to, to make it cut fa uh, a deeper pass if it's softer material, say for example 0.3 of an inch per pass, or if it was a harder material you could limit the depth per pass. The speeds and feeds should all, always be set for the machine and the materials that you're cutting. We can also specify the type of roughing strategy, so we can raster along the x or the y axis and we have the option to profile around at each level either first, last or not at all, not at all. So in this example we won't do any profile machining. The clearance gap is the height above the design the cutter will retract to when, when moving from one cutter path to the next. We're gonna, because we're rough machining we're going to leave on 40 thousandths of an inch. If we calculate, the software has now calculated the top tool path 
and it's also calculated the bottom toolpath so top and the bottom toolpaths for roughing click the next button now we're going to do the finishing toolpath so step four select the cutter In this example we're going to use the quarter inch ball nose cutter with a 15% step over to get a smooth surface finish so calculate the software is now machining the top face and the bottom face click the next button we have the option to cut the piece out if we wish but we're going to ignore it in this example so we say next we go to the preview or step 6 preview the machining or the toolpaths so we can preview the roofing toolpath so that would be the roofing toolpath on the, the top face look at the bottom preview the roofing toolpath you can see that the the cutter is broken through so the roofing would just be it would leave the components being held in by the tabs we can preview the finishing toolpath if we flip the design over look at the bottom we can preview the finishing toolpath on the bottom flip it back again to the top and there's our completed part being held in place by the tabs so once we've gone round we could then if we wish we could go back we could say calculate a cutout toolpath switch the cutout toolpath on let's use our quarter inch end mill machine all the way through the material calculate so now we have the, the cutout path stepping down so we wish the steps to be smaller say point 0.1 of an inch per pass calculate you'll see that the, the cutout path is leaving the tabs in place if we wish to cut the complete the part completely out we can say don't preserve the tabs calculate and next so now if we preview the cutout toolpath you'll see now that we've cut all the way through the tabs and we can delete the waste material so we're just left with the finished piece next we're ready to save the toolpaths for saving to the machine so we say select the post processor that we have let's say for example we have a, a shop bot we use the shop bot an inch post processor we can save the the top roofing toolpath save that to disk save the top finishing toolpath if we switch to the bottom of the model we can save the the bottom roofing toolpath and we can save the bottom finishing toolpath so just to summarize we loaded the CAD model specified the size that we wish to make the components then we edited the material so we specified the material dimensions added some tabs to hold the piece in place calculated the roofing toolpath the finishing toolpath we did a cutout toolpath to cut the piece free and previewed the results to see the finished components we can also look at the the finished job in different materials so we could look at this as a piece of beach or we could, it could be a piece of mahogany we can save this so we can say farm save the shaded image give the file a name and we could then print the file and show it to a prospect or a customer okay thank you very much for watching the video